Hey fellas, hope you're doing well. Good Macho Monday morning, and uh, I hope you're you're having a good day on this Monday. And uh, as life continues to move forward, our mission statement as a church is we are here to intentionally engage the world with the love of Christ. Intentionally engage the world with the love of Christ. That's what we seek to do. That's our purpose. And we do it because Scripture speaks into that. And we do it, we, you know, we use that word intentionally, meaning we take action. And when you look at our dream, you look at the ministries we do, hopefully they show that, that we are consistently active and consistently trying to move forward. And that word engage, which is to just come alongside of, to meet people where they are, to minister to people. And the motive is simple, the love of Christ, the gospel. You know, that, that's why. And for so many reasons to do that. Well, engage as a ministry is a part of who we are as a church family. I unpacked it some yesterday and what we do there and the need for it. And I use the passage that comes right from the, the words of Jesus to us in Matthew 28, 18 through 20, what we call the Great Commission. Uh, Jesus was preparing. He was. It was after his resurrection. It was just before his ascension there at the end of Matthew. He had been instructing his disciples during this period of time from his resurrection until his ascension, preparing them for that final ascending, if you will, that he would no longer be with them. And there's a various amount of teaching that we see in the Gospels about that. But he commissioned them. And, you know, if you've ever been a part of a commissioning service of any kind, you know, in a way, we're doing that with graduations. You know, students are commissioned to, hey, you've accomplished your goal, now go to your next one. Well, Jesus was telling the apostles, okay, we've done this, you've been with me, now the Holy Spirit will be with you, you go in my authority, but now this is what you need to be doing. And, uh, and so that's why we call it the Great Commission. It is the place in Scripture to go to to find the command to engage the community, engage the world as part of being the church. And Jesus says this, he uses similar language in other places and, and similar other commandments, if you will, but that, or commissions, but this is really the one that, that draws our attention the most. And just, I want to read again what he says here in, in Matthew 28 and um, the exact words that he puts there, but he says, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Okay, so remember from whom our authority comes. It comes from Christ. It comes from, from him. He's our Lord. He's fully God. He's our authority. So he has the right to tell us how to live. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The command there is to make disciples. Now, to make disciples does not mean that I take someone and I make them a disciple. I don't have the ability to do that because someone has to choose to do that. But it means teaching. It means helping someone to grow toward being a disciple. Think of it if you're a parent, if you're a dad, you know, you're trying to make your children into adults. You're trying to help them. Now, they have to make the decision to become an adult, but you teach them, you guide them, you model what it means with the goal of one day them making those choices to be what you've taught them to be. And it's the same concept here with discipleship. So the command is to make disciples. And there's various aspects. Go. As you're going, as you're living life, as you're doing what you need to be doing, make this a part of who you are. Baptizing them. That shows discipleship and evangelism go hand in hand. When we disciple somebody, we're going to tell them the, the truths of the gospel, and they're going to make decisions for Christ, and we're going to baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit for that purpose. And then he, he follows it up with teaching them to follow all that I commanded you. Okay, teaching them to follow all I commanded you. That's all the gospels that we've read in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John that Jesus has taught them about. There's probably other commands that, that were not written down that they obviously knew about. But also it's the command of, going and making disciples. He had just commanded them to do that. So you have all that together. And Jesus says, this is what you need to be about. And what's cool is, we, what we see happening here is Jesus tells the 11 this. The 11, as you get into Acts and other books of the New Testament, they are discipling people. 
and helping people grow in Christ. And then you take and you look at the Apostle Paul, who was two or three generations past this. He was not an original apostle. He was at least the next generation, but some people would say even a third generation. Yet you look in Acts, and he and Barnabas are making disciples. Then you see Paul's letters to Timothy. In 2 Timothy, it says to teach those what I've taught you so that they can teach others. And so you see that development. And so naturally, so it goes from the original apostles to a second generation, Barnabas and others, Ananias, who taught Paul another generation, who taught Timothy another generation. And as a result of that, that thread has run through 2,000 years of church ministry. And it's the making of disciples that causes the church to continue to grow and to minister. So Paul says, engage. Be a part of that. So how do we engage? One way we engage is, first off, be aware of people. Just notice people in your life. You know, and as you do, talk to them, share with them. Emulate Christ. Just act like Jesus. Love people. That means ministering. So you engage by loving them, ministering to them, serving them where they are, helping them work through issues in life. We engage people when we're involved in the community, we're involved in the school, when we prayer walk once a month and, and walk around our, our street and our neighbors and talk to them and pray for them and engage them, when we find people to serve, when we serve one another. We engage when we give. There's so many ways that we do that. So I want to encourage you today. To engage is to minister. Christianity is not a spectator sport. It's a participatory sport. It's something we all engage in. So what do you do that? If you're looking for ways to, but you're stumbling about that, you're not sure about this or that, once again, as always, Pastor Josh and myself, Beth, our deacons, we'd love to talk to you about it. But I want to challenge you, and this is a leadership thing again. You know, as a man in general, if you're a father or grandfather or, or a husband as well, but whatever, your, whatever area of life you exist in, lead by engaging. Set the example. Let me pray for you. Father, thank you. And thank you for giving us an opportunity to serve you by engaging others with the gospel, by being a disciple and being a disciple maker. And God, our church in this ministry, God, our men in this ministry. And may we honor you in Christ's name. Amen. Now, before I let you go, a couple of things. VBS starts next, next week. I want you to be a part of that and, and join us. Love to see you up here for that. On the 30th of June, that's a Saturday, Youth to Champions, which is a nonprofit within our community, they're going to host a car show and various other shows up here with vehicles and that may be something you want to be come and hang out with and see what's going on i think it begins at nine o'clock that morning so i'd love for you to be a part of that and also along with engage along with other things we're talking about this month find your place to serve find your place that god wants to use you love you have a good week